In this video, there is going to be no campfires in the desert, there's going to be no near-death helicopter rescues, and there is going to be a lot less tears. Now, if none of that makes any sense, you need to go and check out my Tunisia Desert Challenge video, which literally nearly killed me. I am back in the desert though, this time for the Morocco Desert Challenge. I'm here with my new rally bike, Big Buddy. It's time to race. So what is the Marco Desert Challenge? It is the sister company organized by Gert Dunsen on the Tunisia one. It is an eight day moving bivouac, which means all of this stuff and my tent moves around in the desert and I race and try and get to my tent each night on my rally bike. This is actually the second biggest rally raid in the world after the infamous Dakar. So this is probably, quite possibly, almost definitely, the biggest race I've done in my riding career so far. I'm feeling nervous, but actually I'm feeling really ready because I've put a lot of preparation in, I've put a lot of training in. I have decided to go up to the, uh, the big girl game and go on a full KTM 450 rally replica. It is quite a heavy beast. I've named him Big Buddy because he is a big buddy and I have not actually yet been in sand dunes on him, but there always has to be a first time for everything and that is going to be this week during the Mocco Desert Challenge. I've put the preparation in, I've done some training, I've done loads on my fitness, I've got my nutrition nailed, I've got an awesome team supporting me. I'm here in the desert race in Bivouac. The guys here are going to give me epic amounts of banter, no doubt. I will give them banter back, don't you worry. But no doubt I'll cry, not because of the banter, but because of the fact that this race is probably going to be the hardest thing I've done. Next, I've got to do my sign on and my scrutineering, get all that stuff done. Uh, and then I'm going to try and survive eight days of racing in the desert and not cry. I'm going to make the finish line and not cry. OK, I've got to be realistic. I'm just going to try and make the finish line. Yeah, we'll go with that. So the organisation behind these events is phenomenal. So you come into administrative scrutineering and you get a sheet like this, which has got loads of different checkpoints. You're in a big room and you can see all the different tables all the way around and you basically got to go to each and every one of those and get your stamps and they've got really happy stamps they've got a sad stamp when you have to pay money for like your fuel vouchers they've got little stars and checkpoints and I'm holding it upside down no I'm not I am, look, it's this way up it's alright, I know how to get on a motorbike so I hope the rest of the week goes more smoothly but this is my administration checks all done. I've now got to go get my stickers and my electrical kit onto my rally bike and get myself to the technical scrutineering. So let's head back and find Big Buddy. It's official! Whoop, 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 whoop. Just out doing a little bit of a shakedown ride with Big Buddy and Justin next to a rubbish pile. Just doing a tiny little shakedown ride to make sure that he's all good and happy to go for tomorrow. And I can confirm that he is literally like the sexiest thing I've ever ridden with an engine. He is... Be on the bike! <laughs> what? Be on the bike! No, not him. He's not the sexiest thing I've ridden. We're ridden? He's being naughty. We're talking about my beautiful big buddy motorcycle here. Look at him! Ta da! Sexiest thing ever with an engine. Going with an engine! Look at you, big boy! Big buddy, big buddy! Next to the rubbish dump. There's unfortunately a lot of rubbish dump in Morocco. And there's Justin with his piece hands. Not sure what they're doing. Back to the sexy one. 
Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay. Okay, we've just had the official race briefing, which was done by Gert, and his briefings are like phenomenal. They go through everything and all the questions, the organisations, mega. We you know exactly what's happening tomorrow. We've got to be on the beach at 8.30 in the morning for the massive group photo, which is his like favourite thing. Um, and then we'll be setting straight off from there into the prologue. The sun is going down right now. You can see that. Got a plate of food refueling, and I think the race nerves are starting to kick in. It's getting very real here in Morocco. It is prologue day. I'm walking over to the bivouac. So, this is uh, our second to last night in the hotel from day one full racing. That's into the desert and there won't be this walk from the uh, hotel. I'll just be in my tent next to my bike. Um, I'm feeling really nervous now and I know I always get to this point in a race and I start to feel sick and regret my life choices and wish I wasn't here and why am I entering and doubting myself and everything. I've just got to try and work through it because I know once I go off that start line later, I'll settle into it and I'll hopefully just plod on. My, my goal is to be like an ox. Um, I always think of that because when you see an ox run, it's just strong and steady and it just runs consistently. That's what I'm going to go for, for the finish line. I do have very exciting news for you as well. I am not the only girl on the motorcycle start line like initially suspected. There are two other ladies here. They were late entries. So we have Miss Perse, who is from India. She is the... Gosh, 11 times Indian rally and racing tracks champion and also the FIM Baja champion. Serious racer. Um, and then we also have Yela from Israel, who again is a complete and utter total badass. She's the Israeli national champion. And she came 15th overall at Hellas, which is like mind-blowingly epic riding and won the women's at Hellas. So, I got some massive competition. For some reason, it's given me a little bit more nerves, which is ridiculous because there are like 75 men here <laughs> that I'm also racing. And suddenly hearing that there are two other women makes me a little bit more nervous. But I guess that's just like natural how the brain and nerves go. Uh, mostly though, I'm just mad excited that there are more ladies on the start line and more ladies showing the world that us, us girls can do it too. It's hard, it's not easy, but it is possible no matter what sex you are, to get on a bike and go race in the desert. Woohoo! So uh, I'll pop their links in the description below. Uh, go check them out, give them a follow and give those girls some support. Right, big body is ready to go. racing vehicles are currently gathering on the beach. You can see them all coming in behind me. Uh, this is basically Gert's like favorite photo. It's really important to him. As the second biggest rally raid in the world, seeing this many competitors, 77 bikes and quads, over a hundred and something side by side. I think there's nearly hundred cars, 30 trucks. I mean, it makes 300. There's a lot of competitors here. And so to have got that many of us from 31 different countries around the world, to North Africa in Morocco to race is quite a achievement and the photo is just something that words can't describe. So we're all down here on the beach. We'll probably be hanging out in the sunshine here for a good hour while everyone parks up and the, uh, the drones, of the helicopters will go up, get aerial shots, etc. Hopefully I might have a clip to show you in the video and then we'll all be getting our road books and heading off to do the prologue. But buddy here, big buddy. Uh, we had to drive on the sand for the first time. I don't know why I found it so terrifying. We didn't fall off, uh, <laughs> but it's still got my heart racing. And considering I'm going to be in a lot of sand for the next eight days, I did find that quite entertaining in my little helmet going, oh my God, don't die in the sand, Vanessa, there's people everywhere. <laughs> ah! Now, everybody. 
everybody leaving the beach. I'm uh, a good 40 minutes early for my start time and we all are to be fair I think it's just part of like the early race nerves uh, first bikes are lining up and the very first bike is moments from going off the start line it's uh, it's really real now really real <sighs> once I leave the start line and settle I will just follow the road book try and keep the bike upright and try and keep the power on and hopefully I'll settle into it but right now I feel sick <laughs> there's the helicopter going past you do not get a first bike off the start line until the helicopter is 100% uh, ready to go safety is one of the biggest priorities for Gert and I totally love that so because we're right near an airport right now it can't land and sit here because he always likes us to visualize it and see it so they've just got to drive past just to make sure that we all know that he's got not one but three helicopters ready for the worst to happen but hopefully no one's going to need it i've just sneaked away from the uh the crew everyone over there to find a tree but um to um be very ladylike and have a pee behind it but i thought i'd show you something a little bit cultural you see here these little uh things i don't know if you call it a berry or a fruit or what that is but that is where you get arrogant oil from so it's pretty well known coming out of morocco for being really good for your hair and your skin that is what an aragon oil tree looks like and this is what an aragon oil orchard looks like uh, which is I think pretty cool because I've not seen one in person before and I wouldn't have known whether Aragon oil came from a bark or a sap or a fruit or a nut or a, a monkey okay I'd known it wasn't a monkey uh, I'm just trying to trap myself because I'm really nervous the first bikes are off the line I've still got 25 minutes until I go <laughs> in this video I've not gone into full details about all of the the sign on the scrutineering, all of the jumps you have to take to get through and to the start line of a rally. If you want to see a bit more of the behind the scenes of what to expect on a rally, check out my Tunisia Desert Challenge, which I mentioned before, and my Dinaric Rally one. That's a pretty good behind the scenes of rally. It's, uh, this one's going to be a little bit more desert riding, hopefully focused. We will see what happens. I just really hope I'm going to make the finish line to do that. Okay, I'm trying to figure out my start line tactics. Um, they're setting us off two at a time, which I think is terrifying and evil. And right here, where's my hand? There, Gert, the organiser. Absolute legend, best events going, but is playing with our minds because from the start, on a 37K special test, you've got another person right there and I, for me, when there's someone in front of me, I get really distracted on my navigation. It kind of throws me. But then when you've got someone behind you, there's loads of pressure. And I'm like, ah, what do I do? And they're fighting off the start line. There's 2K, and then it goes into a really tight funnel right into two concrete posts. So one of you needs to be in front by then. I'm thinking I'm just going to be uh, submissive. Let the other guy go. And if I'm faster than them, overtake them later and that way I won't have like this start line fight with loads of dust and stones and you're probably going to think that that's like a proper I don't know wimp out I don't know but I'm not going to win the race in a few minutes in a 38k prologue I've got two and a half thousand kilometers to go yeah well, I've just sold it to myself I'm gonna let them go and then I'll do my thing it's happening start line Hopefully I'll stop feeling sick in a minute. Ah. Got my time card, which means there is definitely no turning back now. I'm on the start line next to a 
factory. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for always being smiley on the start line when I just want to vomit. <laughs> Hopefully it will get better as the week goes on. Day one, nice. Ugh. We're going to be fine, aren't we, buddy? It's a short one. complete that was the prologue uh that was like 38.44 kilometers of freaking fun 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 um first time in sand and we didn't die uh we've survived our first special test together i i was in love with this bike before but now i like i might just go straight to the marriage proposal you know i think it's time i think i think it he's the one like yeah, it was just so good. Like stuff where my little enduro bike would kind of butt me around. Big Buddy just kind of plows and just absorbs everything. And yeah, I made some stupid mistakes. So 2.3 kilometers in, you've got a hard straight. All you've got to do off the start line is go right. 2.3 K, we're going right through some concrete posts. What is Vanessa to do? I'm so freaking out about the fact that maybe I shouldn't be going this fast. And I start off with a factory bloody Yamaha rider so immediately I felt like I was a turtle and I'm like come on Vanessa you can ride a bit faster and I just drive straight past it thank goodness there was a little man going ha ah uh, ah uh. so I turned around and went the right way and then I spent the next like two minutes going Vanessa you're an idiot which distracts me even more um, but there were a couple of times where I got hooned it past by about five guys in the space of a few minutes dust everywhere and then you go into the full imposter syndrome of I'm too slow for this race whatever tried to focus carried on riding and then I took some of them because they like came from over there and then they come from over there. Um, I didn't overtake most of them. Most of them were like bat out of hell faster than me. But there were a couple which gave me a little bit of a confidence boost. And there was some pretty tricky moments of navigation in there, like where there was a corner and it said turn towards the telegraph poles. But there didn't appear to be a track or anything or any, any marks. And like two guys had just overtaken me and were going that way. But I was like, the telegraph poles are over there. I know the track goes that way, but this doesn't feel right. So I trusted my gut ignored if you see someone in the desert just laugh to yourself and think another lost person in the desert ignore them that's patsy quick's quote to me when i was learning and i went the way i should go and it was the right way so i'm glad i didn't doubt myself anyway i'm buzzing if i keep talking now this is gonna be like a three hour video so i better stop uh 57 k leos on home uh all the sickness and nerves i didn't vomit it up they've just calmed down and my body has absorbed them i'm feeling really good now i just want to keep riding like that was a teaser tomorrow stage two
awesome. Yeah, that was wicked. It was really cool. Ah, back to the bivouac safely. So the 57 kilometer road liaison was all good. I'm now in a bit of a conundrum. I've been offered a lift for tomorrow morning's transfer liaison. So it is a non-required 280 kilometer liaison transfer to get us to the start of stage two. As a motorcycle rider, you do not need to ride it. You can put your bike in a trailer and a lot of people are. Desert Roads aren't doing it because there's too many of us for it to be logistically possible, given we only got told this was possible last night. But I have got an offer of a lift with my mad ass and I'd then stay in my tent tonight. But I need to act right now. Uh, why would I do 280k in the pitch black at 4am in the morning when I don't have to when I've got the offer of a lift? I should get a lift, which means I need to jump, hustle, make that happen. Ah! So I survived the rally and then die on the, on the back of a trailer ramp. <laughs> this is pretty cool. We are on a ramp. Big Buddy is going in with Nomadus Adventure and we are going to do the transport liaison in transport, which is incredible. This guy's my hero, particularly the hero of my bum. <laughs> Okay, I made a decision. I'm getting a lift with Nomadus Adventure. Uh, you just saw me loading the bike. I'm now walking back to the hotel to grab a shower and pick up all my kit and stuff. Now, the organization have put tomorrow morning as a transport liaison and all competitors can transport their vehicles, uh, motorcycles in trailers and vans. So that's what I'm gonna do. Why fatigue myself with three and a half, four hours of road in the pitch black at 4 a.m. on Moroccan roads, which aren't always the safest because they can just randomly disappear and lines turn off and roundabouts for no warning, etc. I think statistically, the most accidents in rallies happen on liaisons at four in the morning. So I'm going to take the offer of the lift with no malice. Um, if you watch my Dinaric rally video, you will actually get a tour of the no malice adventure um, Bivouac setup. They are a rally support company. I'm going to be doing the Bosnia rally with them in July. And if you fancy doing a rally, you can come and do that rally. Uh oh, two Vanessas. Oh, in mini Vanessas. You can come and do that rally with me. So drop me a message on Instagram, Facebook, email me if you're thinking that you might like to come do a rally with me in Bosnia. Uh, you don't need any experience at all, you just need to be able to ride a bike off-road for quite a few hours and the rest you'll learn there with me. Or you can be really experienced and you can come race me. Um, and that's probably the most important updates for right now. Uh, I'm going the wrong way to my hotel room, I should probably navigate and get packed. So, Big Buddy is in there. Uh, let me show you these guys. They are pimp. So, that is the name, Nomadus Adventure. As I said, Bosnia, come do it with me. Welcome to them. Dun, 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 dun. They have a full setup in here. Uh, a load of beds, shower, bikes fit in, all the kit fits in. Pimpin! And uh, I'm joining the party for the night. 